is up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of the Dense Pixels Podcast, the first of the new decade. I'm your host, Brad, joined by my co-host, Carrie. What's up? Uh, Terrence is watching 1917. Michael will not be on until he gets internet back because he's moving <laughs> house. Uh, Mike did want everyone to know, though, uh, his game of the year pick, of course, no surprise for anyone, uh, Senran Kagura Peach Beach <laughs> Splash. Uh, I'm sure that he will not dispute that in any way, shape, or form <laughs> whatsoever. Um, we are back this year. We're talking our top five games of the year for 2019. Um, a shame that I, we'll have to get Terrence's next time he's on the podcast because he actually has a, a real list this year and not like a default list this year. Carrie has the default list this year. Yeah, I have five <laughs> games that I played that were new in 2019. Yes. Uh, a few other bits of news. Uh, fortunately, you know, nothing happens over Christmas, so news is pretty low. Uh, comp- even though we haven't been recorded a podcast in, what, three weeks now, I feel like, essentially. Yep. But let's talk about the mobile bullshit that I've been playing lately. And pretty much all I've been playing have been mobile games um, over the past couple weeks, which makes me kind of sad in some respects. But I'm also a busy man this time of year, so I totally understand why that would be the case. Uh, completed Grindstone. Excellent game. We may talk about it later on in the show, perhaps. Um, I pl- tried playing Sinar Wild Hearts finally. Uh, that game without a controller is not good, and I deleted it off my <laughs> phone almost immediately. Uh, Card of Darkness, a roguelike, kind of like card dungeon explorer game, uh, which was really fun. It also has the uh, art style from the same dude that did Adventure Time, I think, or look, at least looks very similar. Uh, I could have okay. sworn I read somewhere. Uh, that one is pretty good. Um, keep it on my phone for right now. Uh, card Crawl is a cool, like, solitaire um, card game that I've been really obsessed with the past few uh, few days here. That's not a new game. That came out like four years ago. Um, but I'm discovering it for the first time, which is very good. I will tell you this. Um, I have learned this about Apple Arcade. I'm not going to continue my subscription um, okay. when I get my when my free month is done in about a week's time here. And that Apple Arcade is something that I will probably pay five dollars to get for a month when something comes out. That is interesting, if that makes sense. No, that's fair. Yeah, there's not enough on the service to warrant continuing to pay money for that on a monthly basis. But like if something comes out and is reviewed super well and people are talking about it, yeah, Yeah. check it out. Five bucks. Yeah, like if if I had had to pay five dollars for this month, like I certainly would have gotten my money's worth out of that between Grindstone and What the Golf, for sure. Yeah. Like between those two by itself. Um we can talk about Witcher 3. Um, I didn't put it on my what we've been playing list because I've literally just played through pretty much like the, the prologue for the game okay. up until you kill the griffin. Um, okay. But I would assume you've played much more of Witcher 3 than I have. Yeah, like every other asshole, I've been playing Witcher 3. <laughs> um, I didn't play it when it came out. Nope. Um, it's been sitting on my console for three years, quite literally. Mm-hmm. Uh, my husband's been trying to get me to play it for... Literally the last three years, Mm -hmm. he was like, I can just install it on your PC. We have a shared Steam library. I can just put it on your PC. Just let me do it. And I was like, I don't think I would like it. Um, Well, turns out I was fucking incorrect because (laughs) I like it a lot. Uh, I think I've put like 30 something hours into it. Because like, you know, uh, the, the fucking Netflix show came out. And I was like, this is good. I want more of this in my life. Yeah, so that's, that's, I that's, just that's like exactly what dove... got me to finally finally get off my ass and yeah. play. So. so I just dove headfirst into Witcher 3. Um, I just got to Skellige. Um, mm. So that's fun. Yeah, the game's really good. I'm playing on like baby easy mode because mm. I, I like I really just want to play for the story. And also I, I don't generally fare particularly well with um like difficult third person rpgs that's not usually my thing mm. um but yeah i like it a lot Geralt's a lot of fun there's a lot of titties in that game and uh, <laughs> uh i chose yennefer over tris before anyone even fucking asks tris was like i'm gonna get on a boat and i'm leaving forever and i was like see ya like <laughs> <laughs> i will so i will say though i've played very little of the game. It seems to me like that game more than most games of its ilk really show you that there's no 
good people in the world. Like there, there's no, Ooh, yeah, yeah. Like there's no like this is the right decision. No moments, it, 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 even just in that prologue, like even just in that very beginning yeah, part of even, the game. Even in the prologue, um, and then like the area you get to right after that, um, Velen. Uh, yeah, like I really fucked up that area. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought I made the right decision, and there's like one decision that you have to make um, that can just fuck that whole region mm. for the rest of time, basically. And like it sort of shows you where you went wrong. And I was like, well, I'm not going to replay the last 15 <laughs> hours of this game. Guess I'm moving on. Uh, so, yeah, but I've, I really enjoyed it a lot. Um, I really enjoy the decision making process. Uh, I like Geralt quite a bit. So, yeah, I've been, been doing that. Um, also, it's not a game, but like I went to MAGFest this past weekend. Mm-hmm. It's the Music and Gaming Festival in National Harbor, Maryland. And it was delightful. I played a lot of video games. I played a lot of good indie games in the indie game showcase. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a game called Donkey Kong Bath Time, and it's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> it's like a and a game for the Wii, I guess, where like mm-hmm. you have a Wii controller, but they like strapped it to like a like a loofah, like a loofah, <laughs> yeah. But like you also had to like sit. In an inflatable bathtub Fantastic. that had like plastic bubbles in it, and just like you had to just wash Donkey Kong with the Wii remote, and so that was an experience, and it was <laughs> fun to watch other people do it. Um, yeah, there was just so much good stuff. Um, the arcade was better than I think it's ever been. They mm-hmm. had probably like 150 fucking pinball machines Mm -hmm. just outside of like the actual video game arcade portion. Uh, if you're into more tactile arcade experiences, they had ski ball, they had all sorts of shit. Um, I, I spent a lot of time actually playing music at Magfest for the first time. Uh, if you're in the fan group, I posted some videos, uh, some of my fellow orchestra pals and I, uh, sort of just like, sat in a corner and read lead sheets and just played video game music for 45 minutes. Mm. And then we all had other things to do. So we just like split up. Um, the jam clinic was super fun. Uh, shout out to the guy who runs eight bit music theory, whose name is completely escaping me, but he was in and out of the jam clinic. He is a super talented drummer. Uh, so I got to jam on him, uh, on, uh, tank from cowboy bebop. Mm. So that was really cool. Just a lot of really talented people, all, just sharing their love for music and video games all weekend long. So I feel very refreshed after MAGFest weekend. <laughs> That's awesome. MAGFest is always one that I've wanted to get out to, but because of when it's timed, it makes it very difficult for me. Yes, it is always the first weekend in January. Mm-hmm. Um, so that can be tough. Yes, for me, it's very tough. Um, but that's cool. Like I said, it, 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 it was cool that you got to especially – you know, partake in the music part of yeah. MAGFest more than usual. Like I said, I saw you sitting with that, uh, with that bass on your knee. Yeah. Week, well, so. actually the, uh, I, I brought like a shitty acoustic. Mm. Uh, I brought an acoustic guitar that I found in my late grandfather's basement. And I think the case that is actively falling apart is worth more than the guitar inside of it. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Very cool. But, I mean, here's the thing. They had like they had sort of like a house base mm-hmm. in the jam clinic room. So like even though I didn't bring my own bass, I still got to like play some funky bass this weekend and some not so funky bass because they had a thing called 2000s Bandioki where they would spin a wheel mm-hmm. and the wheel had 50 different songs from the 2000s. So from 2000 to 2009. I, and- I'm, I'm already... I'm already uh, turned off at this suggestion. So <laughs> so this is the third year that they've done it. Two years ago, they did 80s. Last year, they did 90s. This year, they did 2000s. They could have gone uh, back. To, like, in the past, I, I really do feel like, because I've been listening lately to a bit more contemporary music mm-hmm. and enjoying it. So I can definitively say that in the past 60 years of music, the decade that you are referring to is easily 
the worst decade oh, of music. It, yeah. That and has here's existed the thing. In the past I got to play on Photograph by Nickelback. Oh, jeez. Um, but that, but I also got to play on like The Strokes. They played "Are You Going to Be My Girl" by Jet. Like mm. there, there were some like good songs in there. Um. But yeah, so basically it's like they spin the wheel, the song comes up, and then people have to come up and sing. But also, like, people have to come up and play instruments as well. Mm -hmm. So, like, everyone's got, like, two minutes to, like, look at the chord chart, learn the song, mm -hmm. and then play it. And it's it's a ton of fun. Uh, so that's definitely going to be something you can find me at at MAGFest next year. I miss I miss doing music more than anything else, probably, of things that I used to do back in the you day. You still have a saxophone? It's somewhere at my dad's. Which means yeah. that I'm probably not going to see it so, <laughs> at some mm. point, but uh, but yeah, I do miss it quite a bit because, like I said, I'm pretty sure I could pick that back up and be relatively okay. It's a lot like riding a bike, yeah. And that's especially if you can read sheet music. That's also a yeah helpful helpful skill that uh, I still sort of have. Um, but that sounds awesome. Like I said, Magfest uh, is is sound is always sounds like a cool show, and I always wish that I could uh, that I could check it out. Also, um, I got to cosplay oh. from the worst Zelda games. <laughs> the worst, the worst Zelda game. Which which Zelda game did you cosplay from? The the CDI oh, the games. The CDI game that doesn't that doesn't even count. Yeah, they do. Uh, well, <laughs> those you, those you are say, officially say so. licensed Nintendo products. Uh, my friend Amanda and I did Link and Zelda from Link and the Faces of Evil and <laughs> Zelda and the Wand of Gamelon, and it was delightful. <laughs> Oh my god! I'm sure Nintendo wishes they could fucking bury that in the desert that they all the ET games got buried in <laughs> way back when. Um, games with gold. Uh, this new releases. There's not much to fucking talk about. Uh, games with gold is uh here for January. Mm -hmm. uh, the first games with gold of a new decade. Uh, you are getting sticks. Uh, which is not about the '70s prog rock band. Um, but rather, yeah, but rather a uh, little little goblin. Uh, protagonist mm -hmm. um that's for that's free all month second half of the month you get batman the telltale series which if you have not played it uh is one of my favorite batman stories uh yeah i in, heard it's in very recent memory good. The, the first season is excellent i i played the first episode of season two uh and did not get very far at all. Um, I should go back to that because I did always enjoy those. Um, but that's free from January 16th, February 15th. Again, highly recommend checking out Batman Telltale series. Um, Xbox 360, so playable on Xbox One. Uh, for the first half of the month through the 15th, you get Tekken 6. And then Lego Star Wars 2, the original trilogy, uh, from the 16th through the 31st. So that's your free games on Xbox. On PlayStation, uh, hopefully you got Titanfall 2 before it went away. Because uh, this This banner... <laughs> the juxtaposition it is quite a juxtaposition <laughs> this is actually a pretty damn good month though i gotta say yeah. um you get the uncharted nathan drake collection so that is uncharted one two and three mm -hmm. remastered and the older two games are retrofitted with the uncharted three gameplay so you don't hmm. have to deal with the terrible controls that you had to suffer through an uncharted one this is an amazing deal uh, if you've never played the Uncharted series, first of all, where the fuck have you been? Number one. Number two. I haven't played it. Yeah, but you didn't you didn't have a PS3, so that's that's that's, that's true. That's fair. Um so Carrie, you should go get this as soon as you can. This is gonna I be won't. fantastic. It's a shame because I fucking love the Uncharted games. I might download it mm -hmm. for future playing, but like I got too much shit. Happening if you if you only play three months. If you year. only play one of them, just play Uncharted 2. Uncharted 2, still probably my favorite. It's like that and four are like neck and neck with each other. Okay. Great deal though. And then you get Goat Simulator. So if you want to launch goats uh, all over the place. and I feel and like I would probably play Goat Simulator before I played Uncharted. I mean, Goat, goat Simulator is dumb fun. You know what I mean? So like that's, that, that's free as well if you're on PlayStation. And then uh, Monster Hunter World Iceborne comes out on PC finally. So Carrie can Yay! finally partake in the expansion. Uh, that the other Monster Hunter folks have been playing for the last four months. Yeah, I'm super excited. Uh, if you play Monster Hunter on PC, hit me up. Uh, I think I have a couple friends who might be jumping into Monster Hunter for the first time now that Iceborne is out, and it'll be cool. Uh, if you haven't finished the uh, vanilla campaign uh, on PC, hit me up, and I'll carry your ass through that. <laughs> um, I got good gear now, so I can do that. So, yeah. 
Excellent. Uh, in the meantime, if you're not already watching us on YouTube, you can watch us on YouTube. So head to youtube.com slash dense pixels and hit that subscribe button for video versions of episodes every week. And if you are somehow listening to dense pixels and are unaware of this, we are part of TNP studios and TNP studios has some absolutely delightful premium content, which you can subscribe to for just $5 a month or $50 for the whole year. You can spend some of that holiday money you got Mm -hmm. on premium content. So head to densepixels.com slash premium to subscribe. That gives you access to the full premium slate of podcasts, including the airing of grievances, No Time to Bleed. There's a new episode of No Time to Bleed that just dropped. True lies. I just started True it. Lies. I fucking can't wait to listen to that. I'm mad that Jay didn't call me to record it. I would have <laughs> dropped what I was doing and gone over there and recorded True Lies if he had called me. The Men with the Golden Tongues, which I just appeared on. Yes, uh, the music episode, which was excellent. Uh, A lot of people were very excited about that. And coming this month on Men with the Golden Tongues is going to be our review of Mission Impossible, Rogue Nation. Arguably the best Mission Impossible movie. So you got that look look forward to. Uh, And you also get full episodes of the Look Forward Political Podcast and Boy, howdy, do they have a lot to talk about. Oh, man, we recorded it last night. Uh, me, Me, Jay, and Andy. And uh, yeah, given yeah. given given what's going on in uh, current events this week, it is a must listen. Mm-hmm. It is a must listen. So, uh, and who knows? Maybe twenty twenty will be bringing new and exciting premium Ooh. content to make that to make that five dollars a month or fifty for the year. I don't. That e- much. I don't even know what Carrie's cryptically referring to right now. <laughs> that's that's how that's how secret this is. But if uh, if you don't have the extra dollars to spend on premium, you should still subscribe to the full lineup of free TNP Studios podcasts wherever you get your podcasts. So that includes The Nerd Apocalypse, Black on Black Cinema, Coming Distractions, and the weekly preview episode of Look Forward. And Coming Distractions, you and can us. listen to Carrie's review of Cats. Which has done gangbusters on YouTube. That's amazing. I love yeah, that. Yeah, it's got like... 3,000 views on YouTube now compared to the usual couple hundred mm-hmm. per. So, yeah, cats. I, you you offered a more nuanced review of that movie than I thought you were going to. I thought we were going to get another like 50 Shades debacle. Yeah. I mean, everyone was like, I wanted wine carry. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I had other places I needed to be then. <laughs> like, I had to drive. <laughs> I couldn't down half a bottle of wine. Sorry. <laughs> so getting into the news of the past couple of weeks, we talked about The Witcher. Uh, it's pretty well known that CD Projekt Red uh, has had a various amount of legal disputes uh, with Andre. I- I'm going to butcher the pronunciation. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andrzej uh, Sepkowski, who is the author of the Witcher, Witcher novels of which the game and now TV show uh, is based off of. Uh, of course, most of these issues came from the fact that when Sepkowski sold CD Projekt Red the rights to make the game. Uh, he famously took like not a lot of money. He took he, a lump sum, right? Because um, instead of instead of a instead of like royalties, because he didn't. Yeah, because he was like, successful. "You guys aren't going to do anything worthwhile with this shit. Just give me the lump money." Because he could have taken, like, they they offered him a percentage a, a, of, of yeah that yeah. he he would have been particularly after Witcher three and now with. The Witcher 3 seeing more people playing mm-hmm. it concurrently than it had on launch Which day. Which is insane, by the That's way. That's nuts. Um, yeah, Mr. Sapkowski could have been rolling in that money. So basically, he had buyer's remorse about taking the lump sum instead of um, what CG Project Red had initially offered him, which was the percentage of the overall profit of the series. So... Mm-hmm. Yeah, basically they they reached an agreement. Um, what what I don't understand is how the author's lawyers argued that the initial deal was unlawful. I know, like, like there like wasn't anything unlawful about it. Right? They offered you money. You had no faith in the project, so you took what you thought was the better deal. You mm-hmm. made a bad business decision, and then you got yeah. salty about it when they were making money hand over fist. And you're like, "But where's my money?" Yeah, Sorry. it could have been yours, right? So they said that he was owed an extra $16 million. 
Um, I don't believe that that is what was given to him. Mm -hmm. It may have been. Uh, basically, CJ, CD Projekt Red and Sapkowski have reached a new agreement with the developer uh, reaffirming their rights to the Witcher franchise, uh, as well as basically moving forward, both parties having a framework on which to cooperate. So, yeah. So hopefully this will be the last we hear of any legal issues um, between the two. Hopefully Mr. Sapkowski is being fairly compensated now, even though, again, I don't think that CD Projekt Red was any, any under, under any obligation to do that. But no. good, on, good on them to, to I guess, be the bigger person in this situation. Right. They, right. they didn't – I wouldn't say they owed him anything because, again, they offered him – a percentage of the profits. Right. Which up, is a pretty like, standard with. royalty, honestly. Right. And, and he, he didn't want that. So that's fine. Cool. So, and, uh, but yeah, so there's that, uh, fall 76 gave their players a great Christmas present. Uh, hacker stealing your entire inventory in mm -hmm. the game. Fall 76, the gift that keeps on giving. Apparently from, from I haven't aspect. played in many months now. <laughs> So yeah, apparently there was a bug in the game that happened right before Christmas that hackers could like open up the entire inventory of other players that they were in the world with and take everything out of there as if mm -hmm. the player were like a treasure chest. Yep. Essentially. That seems bad. Yeah, that <laughs> is bad. Um So it's unfortunate. Yeah. I'm just I was I I was waiting to get back in I, my plan was to eventually get back into Fallout mm. 76. Um, it's still installed on my computer. Uh, my plan was to uh, get back into it when the Wastelanders expansion hit, because mm. that was sort of set to be, and still is set to be, the sort of like 76 2.0 expansion. Uh, but that got delayed, so I haven't been playing. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. Um, Truly, truly the, the gift that keeps on giving Fallout 76. Yep. Uh, Just, I, I want so desperately for this game to be good. Yeah. Like there's there's so there's genuinely good, fun things about this game. Uh, but it keeps having these very public stumbles. At least at least Anthem had the good the good gr uh, grace to just go away from from the spotlight. Fall 76 keeps cr cr popping their head up every month. We're like, hey, yeah. new fucked up thing over here, guys. <laughs> so, unfortunate if you were affected. Uh, apparently, it only affected a small number of players, and apparently, it was also a PC only bug. Right. Um, but yeah, so Fall 76, I'm sure we'll be back next month with another fantastic story uh, from them. So, CES, uh, the Consumer Electronic Showcase, uh, is this week in Las Vegas. It's, a, it's more of a general tech show. You don't typically get a lot of video game news coming out of there. Uh, but Sony is there talking about TVs and whatnot. Uh, and so Jim Ryan, uh, CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment, did go on stage for a little bit to talk a little bit about the PS5. Uh, they showed the logo for PS5, which people were like, like, oh, that looks so boring. I'm like, what did you expect it to look like? Right. The PS4 logo was just the PS3 three logo with a four, with a four and this is just the ps4 logo with a five like what, right. what the fuck did you expect it to look like <laughs> it incredible how consistent branding is consistent right so I, like i don't know what people are expecting from playstation I, I, like of course that's what that was going to look like i don't know either um and they it's, did confirm it's the thing that i like about sony when it comes to their consoles everyone knows that after the ps5 it's going to be the PS6 because for the last fucking 20, 25 years, yeah, they've, uh, so. they've been consistent with their naming conventions and with their logo and whatnot. Like the, the interlocking P and S for PlayStation has literally been the same for the last 25 fucking years. Yes. <sighs> Meanwhile, Microsoft can't make up their fucking mind. Is it the mm -hmm. Xbox One? Is it the Series X? Is it both? Is it the S? What do we don't know? 
Yeah, Microsoft. people are going to be extremely confused about that. Yeah. But well, no one's going to be confused about the PS5. No, definitely not. Um, they did also confirm some hardware features for the console. Um, it'll have 3D audio sound. It'll have adaptive triggers, much like the Xbox One controllers currently do with haptic feedback. Uh, and ultra high speed SSD. Thank Ooh. God. I fu- I've been so fucking spoiled with my solid state drive since I got it uh, several months ago. It is amazing. Uh, and I recommend that everyone get one for their PS4 if you have the the cheese to to throw out there on a on even like a 500 gig one. It's amazing. Um, ray tracing, which we already knew about, and then the Ultra HD Blu-ray, a feature that they probably should have had in the PS4 Pro, um, but is now coming to PS5 finally. And they have mm-hmm. also said that over 106 million PlayStation 4 consoles have been sold. Uh, the VR is up to over 5 million units sold and over 1.15 billion PlayStation 4 games have been sold, uh, which is a little over 10 uh, games per PlayStation 4 owner, essentially. So cool. that's about it. Not much to say. Uh, that was the news there for them. Uh, another bit of PlayStation news. Sony has a patent for a new DualShock controller. Uh, it looks pretty much exactly like the DualShock 4. The only difference is they have two... Uh, programmable buttons built in on the back. Uh, a couple weeks ago, they released or they announced the new accessory coming for the PS4 that essentially does the same thing. I guess mm-hmm. they're just building it in on the controller now. Makes sense. It's a feature that a lot more people are looking to get into. Um, probably a good thing that they're not reinventing the wheel too much with the DualShock. I still don't love the DualShock controller, but... Which, which do you prefer, though? I like the Xbox controller. Interesting. See, for some yeah. reason, for some reason, the Xbox controller. This is what I use with my PC. The sides just of it like, feel too tall to me. I don't know. I don't know why. It, it, it's it's a slight thing. And it's probably yeah. just because I don't use it on a regular basis. Uh, I prefer the offset um, analog sticks, um, and just I guess the way the whole thing is angled just sort of feels nice. Sure. Um, some surprising news from EA. So Vince Sampella, the founder and CEO of Respawn Entertainment is now also going to lead the DICE Los Angeles studio in addition to Respawn, and they will probably be rebranding uh, DICE LA. So I guess that uh, between Titanfall 2, between Apex Legends, between Jedi Fallen Order, uh, Vince Ampella getting a lot of plaudits uh, from EA, and they're putting more responsibility on his back, basically. Cool. Uh, Stig Asmussen, who directed Jedi Fallen Order, will continue leading the, quote, narrative-driven branch of development at Respawn. Uh, Chad, I'm assuming that's Grenier or Grenier, is going to oversee Apex Legends, as he has been. And Peter Hirschman uh, is going to be the lead on a new Medal of Honor VR game, uh, which apparently is in development at Respawn right now as well. So good, good for Vince Zampella. A um, little bit of extra responsibility for him. I'm sure it also comes with a pretty healthy uh, bump in compensation, one would have to imagine. So uh, that's pretty cool um, and good to see EA rewarding uh, great performance, I guess. And then finally, uh, in the news, Fortnite, to no one's surprise, was 2019's top grossing game, even though it did suffer a 25% dip uh, in revenue. So last year worldwide... Uh, Fortnite earned $1.8 billion in revenue uh, to the second year in a row uh, that it was the highest grossing game in the world. Last year in 2018, uh, it made over $2.4 billion. Um, Nielsen says this is more of a stabilization, not really indicative of the game's waning popularity, just kind of a, you know, come back mm, down to earth sort of thing. I think thing. Uh, just based on the fact that like, I have cousins who have small kids who play Fortnite. Um, kids are fickle as shit, man. Like, um, uh, I guess you could call it a stabilization, mm-hmm. but I, I think it would be false to say that um, Fortnite is like not less popular. Like, it is less popular than it was a year ago. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, um, obviously it would have to be. Yeah. Uh, so I also think it's worth noting the fact that Pokemon Go raked in 1.4 billion last year. Yes, that's that's pretty impressive. I think, um, especially in context when you're comparing it to Fortnite, um, for a game that's almost four years old. Yes. Um, and isn't 
you know, Pokemon Go isn't everywhere the same way that <coughs> the the same way that Fortnite was everywhere or even the way that Pokemon Go was everywhere when it first launched. Um I think the fact that Pokemon Go made that much money last year as mm-hmm. a free to play um points to the fact that they have really done a lot to make that game worth playing in 2019 and into 2020. The improvements that they've made uh, the new research tax, the addition of Team Rocket, the addition of trading, and all this other stuff. Um, the game's fun to play. I still play Pokemon Go almost every day. So, mm-hmm. um, There's a few more figures I want to throw at you because I always find this stuff incredibly interesting. Um, apparently, spending on free-to-play games accounted for 80% of digital games revenue in 2019. That's nuts. a wild fucking uh, stat to me. Uh, outside of free to play, uh, FIFA 19 was the top game earner, uh, ma- generating $786 million in revenue. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare generated $645 million in revenue, and Grand Theft Auto 5 generated nearly $600 million in revenue. Uh, GTA 5 is remarkable. That That is, I, I don't think it, GTA 5 gets the correct amount of credit that it deserves. And yet mm-hmm. I still feel like it doesn't get a, a, the credit that it deserves. Honestly. Right. It just, it just in terms of um, just the staying power of that game is, is just wild to me. Um, FIFA 20, which just came out in late September earned $504 million uh, just over the last three months of the year, which is uh, to me also a wild number. And then spending on non free to play games uh, dropped about 5% year over year, uh, down to just under $19 billion. Uh, and they say that this is because of the smaller number of major, you know, AAA game releases. And as we talked about when we went over the game awards, uh, winners 2018 or 2019, rather, maybe not the best year, uh, in terms of new video games and, yeah. and things like that. So, but uh, I, either way, at the end of the day, uh, a fuckload of money being spent uh, in video games in general. So again, just just to break it down in context, Fortnite generated an equal amount of revenue as 10% of games that you have to pay for to play generated over the course of the entire year. Mm-hmm. That's a wild fucking thing to just say and understand out loud. Yep. So, good lord. That's a lot of fucking money. Uh, and that is it for the news this week. Oh, I'm doing the ad reads, right. You, um, you can buy GTA money or Fortnite money, I think, on Amazon. Uh, and when you go to Amazon, you should shop through our link, which is densepixels.com slash Amazon. That takes you to the Amazon main page and you shop as normal. And then we get little teeny, teeny, teeny tiny, the most minuscule little crumb that Jeff Bezos could possibly afford to give us uh, whenever you make a purchase. So please do that. That helps us out a lot. Um, And then, um, yeah, please do that. As as we say, Jeff Bezos doesn't need the money. Uh, So as we do uh, at the end of the year, we'd like to tell you our top five games personally of the year that was. Uh, for 2019, I actually had a more robust list than I thought I did this year. My list consisted of about 10 games, and there probably could have been a couple more on there, technically. Um, we will go five to one. We will alternate back and forth. Oh, I have to, like, rank these? Yeah, of course you do. We get the, people, people have got to know what our game of the year was. Great. Okay. So uh, I'll, I'll do my number five first while you figure okay. out what your, what your order is going to be. So I, I need to ask you a question because I have two... At number five, but I need I need to I need your opinion on whether one qualifies or not. So, Guacamelee Two technically released in 2018, but a version of it released in 2019, but it wasn't the version that I played of the game. Then, then you played a 2018 game. All right. Well, then, since I can't count Guacamelee Two, which would have been my number five had Carrie not been a rules Nazi when it wow. comes to release date. You asked me to <laughs> rule on it. <laughs> <laughs> so my number five then for this year uh, is going to be Grindstone, uh, which I talked about uh, on the last episode and briefly on this one. Fantastic mobile puzzle game. 
Uh, it's it's worth playing. It's worth dropping five dollars for a month of Apple Arcade uh, just to check it out. Again, a, a great example of a mobile game done correctly because since it is on Apple Arcade, you don't have to worry about microtransactions. It's a game that would be ripe for them if it weren't on the service. Uh, but because it's not, it's just fun. It's a great time waster. It's one of those great things you just pop in, play a few levels. Um, as the name would suggest, uh, if you want to do some grinding to unlock all of the different items and to like fully complete each level that's there for you. If you just want to blaze through and, and just complete the levels, uh, you can do that as well. Fair bit of challenge in the game, but not too much that, you know, can't be overcome. Uh, there's a little bit of RNG bullshit that happens in the game, which is something I'm never a big fan of. Um, but other than that, like I said, I, I enjoyed the hell out of the game, probably sunk a good, 20 hours plus into it over the past several weeks. So yeah, grindstone is my number five. Cool. Uh, I think my number five for 2019 would be uh Pokemon sword. Wow. I'm shocked that it's that low, quite honestly. Yeah. Uh, it's good. It's a good game. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I wish that there was more to do after you like became the champion, mm. um, beyond just like grinding for shinies. Like a lot of my friends have been doing and I just, I can't get into that. Um, but I really liked a lot of the trainers. The music is so fucking good in that game. Um, the way that they changed it to actually be like a sports league, mm -hmm. uh, is, is such a good way to handle it. Um, but there's like, there's some issues with the game, particularly graphically, um, but that being said, it's a mainline Pokemon game. Of course I'm going to like it. So, yeah. Uh, I, I would put Pokemon Sword at my number five. Cool. My number four is a game that uh, kind of snuck up on me this summer. Uh, it was in a genre that I wasn't sure that I liked. Uh, but it was free, so I said, fuck it. Why not check it out? And I easily sunk in at least 30 to 40 hours playing this over the course of the summer. Of course, I am talking about the monster hunting game, Dauntless. Uh, nice. What a delightful fucking free-to-play experience that was. Uh, really fun gameplay, really engaging gameplay. Does get a little grind-heavy once you get a fair ways into the game. That's probably one of the reasons that I didn't stick with it long-term. Um, but I did really enjoy the shit out of it, uh, of what I played uh, it's a free to game, a free to play game that's done relatively well. It certainly has, you know, some microtransactions, some time savers in there that are a little, you know, but it's it's the kind of shit you expect, right? Like I I think it was I think it's balanced in a pretty decent fashion. Um but yeah, Dauntless is was a lot of fun. Um really it, it got me through what was otherwise a really light summer. And uh and I'm glad that I got to spend some time with this. That is my number four. Cool. Uh, Untitled Goose Game is my number four. <laughs> I can't believe uh, that this is higher than Pokemon Sword. Yeah, I think I had, like, Untitled Goose Game has, like, the kind of replay value that Pokemon Sword and Shield, I think, was missing. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, there's, there's no greater joy than being an asshole goose. Um, this was a game that, like, it was as much fun to just, like, sit with my husband on the couch and like watch each other be jerks to people as a goose as it was to just like play it ourselves um yeah it's really fun um spawned endless memes uh certainly one of the most memorable titles of the year mm -hmm. even if you didn't actually get around to playing it just a really well done little puzzler stealth game where the entire point is to cause trouble on purpose. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's my number four. My number three, uh, speaking of pleasant surprises for me, uh, a game that I wasn't expecting to like because the DNA of the game I thought was rooted in a different game series. And I pleasantly came to find out that it was actually rooted more in a game series that I like a lot. And that is The Outer Worlds. Nice. So like I said, I, I, I wasn't expecting to enjoy this game. Um, wasn't planning on buying it, honestly. 
uh, even after listening to you guys kind of talk about it a little bit. Um, cause I thought it was gonna be like very fallout esque and I don't care for the fallout games very much, but you guys raved about it enough, enough people on the internet raved about it enough. I said, well, I'll pick it up on sale. I'll try it. If I don't like it, trade it in, won't lose that much money. Turns out outer world is the mass effect game that I've been waiting for since mass effect three came out essentially. Um, really, really fun so far. And I'm not even that far into it to be quite honest. I've only put in probably about 10 hours, maybe a little bit more so far. Um, but I'm enjoying the characters in the world. Uh, the combat is fine. Uh, it's not great, but it's definitely better than it is in Fallout, I would say. And uh, mm. and I I enjoy I I think so at least. Mm. Agree to disagree on that. <laughs> one. And uh, and I enjoy the the different regions and and just kind of how quests lay out and things of that nature as well. Also feels like a low pressure game. I talked about before how it doesn't feel like you have to do absolutely every fucking thing that comes your way. And that game, it, it really does lend itself well to the role-playing aspect uh, of these types of games. And I'm looking forward to getting back into it and actually uh, hopefully finishing it. So yeah, Outer Worlds is my number three game of 2019. Interesting, because Outer Worlds is also my number three wow, game okay. of 2019. Um, yeah, I liked it a lot. Um, the, the folks at Obsidian went and proved that um, they know how to make a fun rootin' tootin' shootin' RPG uh, that's not necessarily connected to Fallout but might be if you find easter eggs that maybe point to it being connected to the Fallout series um, but yeah, it's it was a f- lot of fun, I liked a lot of the characters my big gripe is that like uh, short mm-hmm. but it's getting DLC is it? Yeah, they said they are working on DLC. We don't know if it's going to be paid okay. or free, but they're working on it. Yeah. Uh, I would probably, I mean, I would definitely revisit Outer Worlds uh, with some additional content in it. So, yeah, um, there, there is some replay value. There's multiple endings. Um, I would probably go for a similar ending, but not fuck it up as hard as I did, mm. um, as I did the first time. Yeah. Outer Worlds was a lot of fun. Um, I hope that it sort of heralds the arrival of Obsidian as sort of finally like really doing their own thing and doing it really Mm. well rather than taking tools provided to them by another company like Bioware or Bethesda and doing something with that Mm -hmm. like they did with like KOTOR and Fallout. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Cool. Uh, My number two is not a surprise to anyone that listens to this show. Uh, Borderlands 3 gave me exactly what I wanted from a Borderlands game, and that was just crazy characters, cool guns, really fun gameplay. Uh, they added some you know, elements that modernized the game to make it more compatible with uh, the shooters of today, um, just you know, mechanical stuff in the game, so things of that nature. Um, I really... Just had a ton of fun playing Borderlands 3. And I played the shit out of it when it came out. Beat the game in a number of weeks, essentially. Um, now, I haven't revisited it too much since then. Part of that's Outer World's fault. Part of that's Destiny's fault. Um, but it's but I, but I will revisit it. I know that I will come back to that game when the mood strikes, when certain DLC comes out. Uh, the Casino DLC looks really cool. But yeah, Borderlands 3 is a great example of a developer listening to their fans, giving them what they want. And uh, and it's a great game because of it. So that's my number two game of 2019. Cool. Uh, Cadence of Hyrule is my number two. Um, yeah, that game was very much a surprise because um, I feel like I feel like for a long time, maybe because of how badly the Zelda CDI games were, Nintendo has been very reluctant to license out their characters to other studios, particularly not an indie studio. I don't think anyone could have expected that was ever going to happen, but the folks at Brace Yourself Games, who did Crypt of the Necrodancer, um, did a Zelda game in the style of Crypt of the Necrodancer. And it's so fucking fun. Like, it's really, really well done. The remixes of the Zelda music are super catchy. There's there's enough of Necrodancer gameplay in terms of like movement and attacking to a set beat. Plus, it's got the art style of 
Link to the Past. It, it was just, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I, I played through it a few times because it's rogue-ish. Uh, where, like, every time you start a new game, like, the map is different. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, God. Cadence of Hyrule was so much fun. Uh, that's another one where it's like, I'm like, I kind of hope they do another one. Uh, I've never played the original Necrodancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I may never play the original Necrodancer because I understand it's very difficult. However, <laughs> I picked up uh, Cadence of Hyrule very, very quickly. And that may have something to do with the fact that I'm a musician. Yes. <laughs> So like locking into a beat is uh, maybe easier for me than it is for those who are less musically inclined. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was such a surprise and uh, just really, really delightful to to play multiple times now. So So my number one game of 2019 uh, is one that going into 2019, I wasn't even aware of its impending release on the Nintendo Switch. And if you had asked me would I have expected an indie game that I wasn't aware of going into the year to be my number one game of the year, I would have said you're crazy. Brad likes AAA games. He doesn't fuck with that indie shit too much. And what he does it just for fun. But lo and behold, I heard about Slay the Spire. Mm. Heard about the type of game that it was. Knew that I would absolutely love it. Found about it at a trade show. Downloaded it as soon as I got back to the hotel on my Nintendo Switch. Started playing it that night. I've been playing it for the past several months. Uh, I fucking love Slay the Spire. What a perfect game for someone like me who also plays a lot of board games, who really enjoys deck building games, uh, and just endlessly replayable. Like I said, constant challenge, ton of content in the game, just in terms of beating the different challenges in the game, as far as like getting through the different Ascension difficulty levels and stuff like that. Not never, never quite knowing what your deck's going to look like at the outset, but you know, tuning it as you go along, just really fucking fun. Um, I played so many runs, so many hours of Slay the Spire, uh, this year. It's a game that I'm going to keep coming back to over and over again. Um, great fucking game. It's my number one game of 2019. Since Monster Hunter World technically came out in 2018, on both console and PC, I cannot choose it as my game of 2019, (laughs) much as I want to. So instead, I will choose uh, a game that has been very near and dear to my heart for basically the entire time I've been playing video games. Uh, and re-entered my life on the Nintendo Switch this year, and that is The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Uh, the remake was super, super well done. Uh, I love the the arrangements of the music. I love the graphical style that they did, where all the characters look like a toy in a big diorama. It's just, they they managed to keep everything about Link's Awakening that's that was charming and good and challenging, while fixing a lot of the jankiness of the mm. original Game Boy titles. Um, everything about the game was fun. Yeah, it's a lot shorter and more compact than, you know, A Breath of the Wild, certainly, or really even most other uh, Zelda titles. But Link's Awakening has held a very special place in my heart for 22 years now. Because mm. uh, I guess I, I got into it with the uh dx version which came out in 98 so yeah it was it was really good to return to uh koholint island to uh link and to marin uh and to the windfish and it, it link's awakening the the ending of that game is you know it i've i've beaten that game before i know what's coming but like even still like it just like rips your heart out uh I'm glad it did well. I'm glad it was reviewed well. And I hope that Nintendo will maybe do the Oracle games Mm. in this style. Because I would love to play those games again. But I'm not going to stare at a two-inch Game Boy Color screen. (laughs) Mm. So, yeah. 
Link's Awakening is is my game of 2019, but only because I can't pick Monster Hunter, which I put 130 hours into last year. Right, and, and so. again, as, as you guys well know, like, though my top five is my top five, uh, the game that I played the most in 2019 was Destiny fucking 2. So, I mean, like, that's just the way it yeah. is. But uh, it was just a, a regular-ass year for Destiny. Like, they did some cool stuff. Um, I like the new expansion, but I can't pick it as my game of the year. Because it's yep. just Destiny. De- Destiny's just a part of what I do, basically, at this point. So, uh, so that is our top five. We will get the other top fives from the other two members of the show uh, next time we see them. So look forward to uh, to that coming as well. So we take you to the Dense Pixels post office where you can ask us questions. Uh, to ask us questions, you have to be a member of a fan group. Go to densepixels.com slash fans to join there. We start with Cam, who says the Mortal Kombat movie has started filming – the Witcher is successful. I'll be based more on the books and live action. Based exclusively on the books. Yes. The, the Witcher is not based on the video game in any sense. You are let's correct. Let's just but establish that. You are correct, but let's, I, I think it's also fair to say that I don't know if it's getting that adaptation, if not for the popularity of the video games. That's fair. So, yeah. And then a live action series is being heavily rumored at Netflix. Mm. Do you guys think that video game properties are going to become the new comic book frontier for prestige TV and movies? Or will the quality continue to be spotty enough to halt the momentum? Look, um, first of all, there's been a live action Zelda series rumored via news sites for the last four fucking years. So I just don't even want to recognize that as being even remotely legitimate because I don't think it is. Um, But to answer the question regarding video games becoming the new comic books. I think you have to look more at the success of Detective Pikachu. Like, Detective Pikachu was good. It was reviewed well. It made a lot of money. They're working on a sequel. Um, We'll have to see how Sonic does. And that comes out in six weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, Holy shit, does it? Yeah. Boy. Uh, it's, It's interesting because much like comic books, and I would say far more so than comic books, there's a wealth of genres to choose from. There's a wealth of styles to choose from when it comes to video game content and plots and narratives and whatnot. But um, I don't know. Like, we've had okay video game films and we've had fucking terrible video game films. So and- so here's the thing. I think I think video games could be one of the next bastions for great properties, but here's why. The reason why they never caught fire before is because studios would take the properties, Hollywood them up, mm-hmm. and make them unrecognizable to fans of the genre and make shitty movies that didn't bring new fans in. Yeah, I think what we're seeing is you have you know showrunners or people that are being more faithful to what the properties are, right? And, and so, we saw that with Detective Pikachu, right. Especially, and and so when you take what's already a good groundwork of you know of story of characters of you know of world building, and then extrapolate that, that's where good things come. Like now, like before. I would have been loath to see like Metal Gear on like a Netflix show or, you know, like on the silver screen. But, but now, now I have a feeling that they'd be like, look, if we do this. We're going to get consultation from Kojima, Kojima and we're going to do this right. And I think they could pull it off now. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I think Netflix and Amazon have more to do with that than movies do at this point. I, right. think, I think being able to tell a story over a 10 episode series over 10 hours of content for video games works far better than trying to condense it into two hours. Right. And honestly, you look at even in animation, the Castlevania series on Netflix, Mm -hmm. which is based on Castlevania three, super fucking good. Mm -hmm. And that's because they stayed true to the source material. They kept the feel of the material. Um, Yeah. I think it has the possibility and like like you said, it all has to do with how the studios choose to, to handle the material. Um, I'm very curious to see Sonic next month. Uh, hopefully I get the screener for that. Because uh, I think the first trailer that we got was them Hollywooding it up 
for like a general audience, not realizing that the general audience, like the general populace at this point, everyone kind of knows who Sonic the Hedgehog is. And everyone knew that that wasn't fucking Sonic. Mm. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see. We're going to, we're going to do a twofer from Amir. He has two questions. We can combo them together. First question is for the next gen consoles, how much are you willing to spend for the PS five or the Xbox series S the PS five? There's no, or Xbox, right? Um, look, (laughs) here's, here's the deal. I don't know what I'm willing to spend on a PS five. These consoles are not going to be higher than four ninety nine. There, there is going to be a version of them that is available for under five hundred dollars, mm-hmm. guaranteed. Even if that means they're eating loss on it, because yeah. putting it out at six hundred is is a is a death knell. Yeah, out of the gate at least. Now, what's interesting, and I was talking about this with Micah the other day. I think Xbox more than PlayStation. I think Microsoft is going to find a way. Like like the Series S is not going to be the only Xbox that comes out when the new systems drop. I think Microsoft is going to do what Apple does, basically. They're going to have the cheapest option available, but they're also going to have the most expensive option. I think you're going to see a similar thing that you get with like when the iPhone 11 comes out, but then you get the iPhone 11 Pro. As well. So I think you'll see like a regular version and then like a pro version for the new Xbox. So I can see like a regular one coming out like 350 and then Hmm. the pro being like five. Or maybe if if it is a pro console and you have a cheaper option available, maybe you can. Maybe then you can go to the higher to the higher price point. Hmm. PS5 is going to be 499. You can fucking put it in the bank right now. I guarantee that it's going to be 499. Here's the thing with with both of them. I'm not buying either of them probably within the first year. Mm. I don't play enough on PS five to like need to buy it Mm -hmm. day one. Um, I have a PS four. It's going to play persona five Royal. And I, that's, that may be the only PS four game I buy this year at this rate. Um, I probably will buy the PS five on mom's day. Highly likely. If I don't, it, one, I mean, if, here's if I the thing. If it's got like so. a killer <laughs> app kind of game at launch, yeah, maybe I do, mm-hmm. but yeah, pr- we'll probably not. Uh, Amir also asked, uh, he's been thinking about building a gaming PC. Uh, he knows he's going to buy a PS5, but if he does build the PC, should I still get an Xbox? No. Uh, no. If Microsoft no. is going to let you have the full Xbox experience on a PC, then why the fuck would you bother? Yeah. That's literally pissing money away. Right. Um, yeah, I, I, if I wanted to play Xbox exclusives, I can do that on my PC. My PC is much better than an Xbox. Mm-hmm. Um, and it has the best part about the Xbox, which is the controller. Uh, yeah. I mean, as Chris was kind enough to reply, uh, going to say no just for the fact that the majority of Xbox games end up getting same day PC release. That's it. You don't need an <laughs> Xbox if you're building a nice PC. Yep. And uh, so Michael asks, uh, what's a game that defeated you as a kid that you would later revisit and conquer? Uh, see, my problem is the opposite normally happens. There's lots of games that I was able to beat when I was 12 that, nope, 30, 36-year-old me cannot. Or 35-year-old me. Holy shit, I'm making myself older than I need to. Wow. Good, good Lord. Um, Yeah. There, there's a lot of games that I was able to play and beat when I was a kid that I cannot touch anymore. Hmm. I think for me, like, y- you got to understand that, like, I didn't have consoles in the house when I was a kid. Um, I've gone over this before. My parents didn't want, like, a home console hooked up to a television because they were like, we do this she's never going to leave the house so the compromise was handhelds which is why i got really big into nintendo because i had a game boy (sighs) but there were other kids in the neighborhood there was a kid across the street who had a um sega genesis i had a lot of problems with like sonic 2 and i later like as an adult like downloaded it on pc and like beat (laughs) sonic 2 so like 
I just remember struggling with that a lot. But of course, I it's not like I could sit there and like play the levels over and over again and get mm. good at them because I was only playing them in like 10 minute spurts here and there. Um, but as you said, there are games that I played when I was younger that I would I don't think I would ever go back and play today. Um, Zelda 2 comes to mind. Mm. I played that because they put it out on like Game Boy Advance or something like that. They did some sort of yeah, port. They did. And I played that when I was in high school. And I definitely finished that game. Mm. You couldn't pay me to play that game today. Uh, I don't blame you. That and Castlevania 2 can go die in a fire because <laughs> fuck both of them. <laughs> so bad. Yeah, Zelda 2 certainly had some ideas about how games should be played. Yeah, not good ones, but they certainly mm-hmm. had ideas. Uh, I also played the original Final Fantasy when mm-hmm. I was in high school. Never, never, never again. again. No, <laughs> no. Johnny asks, uh, Nintendo's doing a mini direct for Pokemon tomorrow. They are. Uh, any predictions or hopes of which gen Pokemon's going to add in? Is it tomorrow or is it Thursday? Uh, it might be Thursday, yeah. but it might be tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to make a prediction before you do, because mm-hmm. I heard this on another podcast and it sounds mm-hmm. reasonable to me. Uh, a Let's Go version uh, of the Johto region. That's what, what I, I want. Yeah. That's that's what I want more than anything tomorrow. People are like, please give us the Sinnoh remakes. And I'm like, kiss my ass. Give me Let's Go to Johto. Um, yeah, I, I, I would actually really like uh, a Let's Go remake of the Johto games. Um... I also hope maybe they announce some DLC for Sword and Shield, some like post game content. Uh, I think what we are definitely going to hear more of is the Pokemon Sleep app mm-hmm. that they have announced previously, as well as Pokemon Home. Uh, I think you can probably count on both of those. Um, but yeah, I think I think we will either get a DLC announcement for Sword and Shield. Or we will get an announcement of Gen 2 remakes in the Let's Go style. What if you got Gen 4 remasters? How would you feel? I'd be down with it, man. Like, I don't... There's not like a generation... That's not true. I was going to say there's not a generation of Pokemon that I explicitly dislike. But I explicitly dislike Gen 3. Um, Yeah. Isn't that, isn't, isn't that blasphemous to say? I don't think so. Didn't you just run through Emerald like a year ago? Uh, no, I did uh, Leaf Green on my stream. Isn't that still Gen 3? That's the Kanto remakes of Gen 3. Oh. Yeah. They're Game Boy Advance, but Leaf Green is is a remake of the original Red and Green, gotcha. Red and Blue. Um, No, I didn't care for Ruby, Sapphire, or Emerald <laughs> at all. Uh, I thought those games were just such letdowns after um, after Crystal, especially. But yeah, I mean, if look if they if they want to announce Sinnoh remakes, Gen Four remakes, fuck it, I'm in. Look, they could they could announce Gen Three remakes. I don't like Gen Three. I will absolutely play that game. They've already done Gen Three remakes though. They did on on the DS. Yeah, they're not but gonna, if, they're not going to revisit that on Switch. I don't think. Oh, they will eventually. You think so? Absolutely. Okay. You you know more than I do. So, well, you mean like in like yes. a le- in like a let's go format? Oh, I can see that. Maybe. Yeah. Here's sure. here's what I think is going to end up happening with the Pokemon series. You will have a let's go game on the off years mm-hmm. of the mainline hardcore serious huge air quote serious Pokemon games. You could just say main, um, you could just say mainline Pokemon. <laughs> Yeah, I really enjoyed Let's Go Pikachu. Um, I thought that game was cute as heck. And uh, Johto is my favorite region. Gen 2 is by far, by far my favorite gen of Pokemon. So if they do, like, let's go to Johto. Yeah, sign me up. I'm in. (laughs) Johnny also posted a picture of Tom Hanks at the Golden Globes doing the trademark Brad face. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to need to get in contact with Mr. Hanks' people. Because I demand royalties for this face that I definitely invented and am famous for. <laughs> uh, Trey asks, is the time Siphon Filter got a reboot like God of War? Absolutely fucking not. Siphon Filter is incredibly overrated and is a product of its time. So, no, we don't need a Siphon mm-hmm. Filter remake. 
No one, no one cares about Gabe, the siphon filter man. Brian also asked about SOCOM. Again, SOCOM, a product of its era. Take your, nostal- yeah. take your nostalgia goggles off for SOCOM. Get them out of your face. There are better tactical shooters out there that currently yeah. exist today that we don't need to remake SOCOM. You know what game needs to be rebooted? Of course it does. It does. <laughs> And finally, Adam says, is Xbox Games Pass worth it for people that only play on PC? He doesn't have a physical Xbox, but Xbox Anywhere option is tempting. Does the games list make it worth it? Um, look, if you want to <laughs> Look play... at the games list. Right. Are you, there if... enough games on there that you want to play? If so, yeah, sure. It's worth it. That if is... not, don't spend your money. That is literally the answer. Like, if, there, if there's Xbox exclusives that you want to play on PC, sure. If there is not, then no. That's that's not something we can we can decide for you. Adam also asked uh, what what to mix like G fuel or gamer supplements with besides water. You're supposed to mix them with water. Don't mix them with anything else. Also, don't don't buy gamer fuel because that shit's nasty. And also the guy who runs G fuel is an asshole. So, like, (laughs) don't buy that stuff. Go if if you're trying to get like supplements or whatever, go to your fucking GNC and talk to someone who actually knows what they're talking about. Yeah, don't don't buy like I don't even know what brands are out there, but don't buy any of that stuff. It's all garbage. Yeah, it's, terrible. it's not good for you. So that is it for uh, question the for the post office. Thank you guys for submitting your questions, and that will do it for the show. So don't forget to get, join our fan group densepixels.com slash fans. Follow us on social media at densepixels. Subscribe to all of the TNP Studios podcasts. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow Carrie on Twitch at Suppets Carrie. Yeah, I uh, I'm about to get some upgrades to my PC, and then hopefully once those are done, then I will start streaming once again. Got to get in the habit of doing that this year. So, I'd like to say that I will stream more in 2020. You won't. We all know it's a lot, so I'm not mm-hmm. even going to say it. So, <laughs> that is it. Uh, we're glad to be back. We hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching and listening. We will see you all in the next time. Thanks. You're watching the Dense Pixels YouTube channel. Click the subscribe button while you're here and make sure you check out our weekly podcast where we discuss the latest gaming news and our impressions on what games we've been playing.